Welcome to dealing with materials data. This is a course on collection analysis and interpretation of uh, data from material science and engineering. We are looking at uh, some of the R tutorials. Uh, so, we had an introduction to R and then we learned how to describe uh, data using R. And uh, this is the module on probability distributions. And in this module we have looked at discrete uh, distributions. Uh, we have also looked at uh, the uniform distribution which is uh, um, uh, sorry normal distribution which is a continuous distribution. And uh, we are going to continue with uh, continuous uh, distributions. Uh, in this uh, case we are specifically going to talk about log normal distribution. So, a log normal distribution uh, is a distribution x is said to follow log normal if log of x is distributed normally. So, the probability distribution function for log normal is 1 by root 2 pi and 1 by beta x exponential minus log of x minus alpha whole squared by 2 beta squared where a x is greater than 0, beta is greater than 0 and f of x is 0 otherwise. If you use the change of variable y goes to log x, the resulting distribution is actually a stand, standard normal distribution with alpha uh, taking the role of uh, mean and beta taking the role of standard deviation. So, uh, Kolmogorov is the one who came up with the law of fragmentation. Uh, he showed that, that large collection of particles uh, which result from particle frag fragmentation, you know this is very important in mineralogy and geology and such areas uh, where you are trying to uh, break and make smaller particles. And in such cases uh, the, the particles their size distribution is actually log normal. So, this is what uh, Kolmogorov uh, showed. And uh, in the case of grain size for example, sometimes uh, it is uh, said that the data follows uh, log normal distribution. I am going to show you one data which uh, comes from uh, a paper of Underwood, uh, ferrite grain size uh, which uh, we will plot and see that it follows uh, um, log normal. But uh, if you use our uh, FIT uh, DASTR plus fit distribution plus uh, library and try to do the fitting, you will see that it is not uh, quite uh, log normal. And uh, this is uh, common, in fact in many data sets uh, that uh, is expected to be log normal I have verified and uh, rarely you get a good fit for uh, log normal. Uh, there is one more data set um, uh, which I'll from uh, Smith and Jordan. So, it uh, says mathematical and graphical interpretation of log normal law for particle size distribution analysis from Journal of Collide Science. And they also say that log normal law is excellent for particle size distribution analysis. And they also describe in their paper how to gather data and how to analyze the data for uh, log normal distribution. So, we will take uh, data which is given in this paper and try to uh, see if it follows log normal and also try to generate uh, from our um, from our uh, model the data and uh, try to see if we can uh, compare the distribution that we generate with the empirical data and say anything about the uh, distribution. Uh, of course, the, the, the log normal distribution uh, for in, in R the command is L norm. So, D L norm, P L norm, Q L norm, R norm are the uh, commands or the function calls. So, you can get the probability density cumulative distribution function and quantile function using uh, these three functions. <coughs> the random deviates are generated using RL norm. So, so we are going to use uh, um, standard mean of 2 and standard deviation of 1 and we are going to generate these quantities just to check. So, we will uh, now do the R tutorial for log normal distribution. The first exercise as usual, uh, we are going to make 3 plots and uh, we are going to plot between 0 and 15 
and the first one is uh, log normal the probability distribution function, the second one is the cumulative distribution function. And uh, as we indicated for uh, DL norm the mean uh, log is uh, uh, 2 and uh, standard deviation log is 1. So, that is the value we are using. So, you can see the mean log 0 standard log 1 uh, standard deviation log 1 is what by default it uses, but you can change those values. And of course, I am also going to do the quantile plot. So, there are going to be 3 plots. So, you can see that uh, uh, this is the distribution and uh, this is the uh, cumulative distribution function and this is the uh, quantile plot. Of course, you can uh, plot just the Um, plots individually to get a better idea how they look. Okay. So, this is the uh, distribution function of a standard uh, normal uh, log normal distribution. So, if you see some data follows uh, distribution like this, uh, then you expect it to be a log normal. So, that is what we are going to see. You will see many data that looks like this, but it need not be uh, log normal because there are competing distributions which describe uh, similar uh, kind of um, data is what we are going to see. And of course, uh, we will see the cumulative distribution function goes like that. Okay. And uh, the quantile function goes something like this. So, because it is the inverse of the cumulative distribution function. Of course, one can generate uh, uh, random deviates from log normal distribution and that is what we will do and plot that data as a histogram and uh, here is that data. So, this uh, generates a random deviates from log normal distribution again with the same mean and uh, standard deviation and then we are going to have a histogram plot and you can see that the data goes like this. Okay. So, it has a long tail, but it peaks somewhere uh, closer here in the beginning and then it, uh, it goes down. Okay. So, let us uh, take a look at a uh, couple of uh, data sets. The first one that I want to use uh, is from Underwood and uh, so let us uh, read that data first. So, it is for ferret size, uh, size uh, um, versus numbers that is what uh, Underwood has given. So, this is the size and these are the numbers. So, if you plot this uh, so you see that the, the data goes like this. So, um, Underwood says that this could be expected to be um, log normal approximately. And let us check. So, we want to use the library fit DASTR plus. Okay. Then we want to. So, we want to take this data and um, we want to check whether our data follows. Uh, okay. As you can see, if we try to look at the data, then uh, it does not follow uh, log normal really. Log normal is somewhere here and our observation lies uh, somewhere in beta. Mm, this is for V1, you can look at V2. Uh, in fact, V2 is uh, more or less like uh, uniform. So, it is it's clear that difficult to see that this data follows uh, log normal distribution. And uh, there is another uh, data uh, which is uh, from Smith and Jordan like I told you and let us try to uh, load that data and see what happens. Okay. So, we want to read the Smith-Jordan log normal data, we want to plot x 
and then we are going to use uh, fit distribution plus library and uh, describe the data of uh, size. Okay. So, again here again the data seems to be in the beta, it is not really in, uh, um, however if you look at the data, so you can see that it, it does uh, look like uh, log normal distribution very nicely, right. So, even though it looks nicely like this, uh, when we try to do the uh, fit dis DASTR plus, uh, you see that it says that the data is um, not really following log normal, log normal means it should have been somewhere here, but uh, observation falls somewhere in beta. So, this is a problem, it is very difficult to uh, actually know and there are other competing distributions which will also give and uh, something like beta uh, which by changing parameters you can fit the data well might do that. So, it is really difficult sometimes to know which is the right um, distribution that the data follows even though if you know for physical reasons that the data is expected to follow a distribution that is the distribution you should use. So, we are again going to take a look at uh, uh, the uh, Smith Jordan log normal data. And I am going to calculate the mean and standard deviation of the size data and I am going to generate random deviates with that mean and standard deviation from the log normal and then I am going to plot it, then I am going to plot the data. Uh, then we will see whether there is a better matching that we can see and of course you can see that uh, the histogram of data that I generated with the same uh, mean and standard deviation looks like this and our data also looks like this. So, it uh, does look like uh, we have a data. Uh, so, so, every time I run you get a different distribution because the random deviates are different. So, you can see that every time the, the, the deviates that you generate uh, seem to fit very well the data which is not surprising because from by looking at the data for example, you can see that it, it looks like the um, log normal. So, um, in the case of uh, grain size and such fragmented particle size uh, etc., it is expected that the distribution is log normal. So, it is always useful to try to see how closely uh, does uh, the log normal distribution describe the data. So, log normal is an important uh, distribution. So, it is uh, used especially in uh, areas uh, like this where um, there is reason to believe uh, based on uh, some of the theories like Kolmogorov's uh, law of frag fragmentation for example that the data is expected to follow uh, log normal distribution. But uh, sometimes uh, for example grain size uh, there are other competing distributions uh, that will describe uh, what is happening. We have also seen in some cases the grain sizes uh, it was very different. Um, we have seen data uh, by, while we were doing descriptive statistics. So, especially grain size data, data it is very difficult to, to say that it should always follow log normal. But in other cases where you expect log normal, you will try to fit the data to log normal and see. Even though if you do blindly and try to fit uh, the data to available distributions, there are other competing distributions which will show up and probably show that they have better fit to your data. So, it dis depends on your uh, needs and purposes. Uh, if uh, you know for sure that the data should follow a given distribution, uh, that is what you should try to fit for. If you just try to get a description, uh, it does not matter whatever distribution that you can get, then of course you can explore and find the distribution that describes your data the best. So, this is uh, log normal distribution and uh, like I said, I have found it very difficult to find any data. Uh, that uh, if you use uh, fit uh, DASTR plus uh, will show that it is log normal. Um, so, I am not sure unless maybe if you just ge generate uh, random deviates and give it to fit DASTR plus it will show that it is uh, log normal. In all other cases I have found that there are always competing distributions and most of the times it is beta that it shows uh, to be better fitting. But it is a good exercise for you to go look up uh, data. 
um, as part of this course uh, you, you should also train yourself to go look for uh, data or generate uh, some such data and try to do the analysis and see if you can get uh, better data that fits uh, log normal distribution. Thank you.